of separate offenses by separate counts in the indictment. <coughs> Your determination of whether the state has proven the defendant guilty of the crimes charged in the indictment beyond a reasonable doubt, the defendant is entitled to have each count considered separately by the evidence which is relevant and material to that particular charge based on the laws I'll be giving it to you. You must also return separate verdicts for each defendant as to each of the charges being tried. In other words, you will have to decide this case individually. Whether the verdicts as to each defendant are the same depends on the evidence and your determination as judges of the facts. I'll now define murder for you. In this case, the state has charged both defendants with murder. I will now provide you with the law and definitions that are applicable to the crime of murder by causing the death of another person purposely or knowingly. The state has further alleged that defendant Munoz caused the death of Michael Black by his own conduct. I will define that concept for you after explaining the crime of murder. The state has further alleged that defendant Velasquez is guilty of murder in that he acted as an accomplice to defendant Munoz in committing the crime. I will define the concept of accomplice liability shortly. The defendants are charged by indictment with the murder of Michael Black. Count 1 states that on or about the 9th day of November 2015 in the township of Hamilton, county of Atlantic and within the jurisdiction of this court, Dennis J. Munoz did purposely or knowingly cause the death of Michael Black by his own conduct, contrary to law, against the peace of this state, the government and dignity of the same. Count 3 states that on or about the 9th day of November 2015 in the township of Hamilton, county of Atlantic and within the jurisdiction of this court, Edwin V. Velasquez was an accomplice to the crime of murder, specifically by aiding or agreeing to aid or attempting to aid Dennis Munoz in the planning and commission of the knowing or purposeful murder of Michael Black, contrary to law, against the peace of this state, the government and dignity of the same. A person is guilty of murder if he, one, caused the victim's death or serious bodily injury that then resulted in the victim's death, and two, the defendant did so purposely or knowingly. In order for you to find the defendant guilty of murder, the state is required to prove each of the following elements beyond a reasonable doubt. One, that the defendant caused Michael Black's death or serious bodily injury that then resulted in Michael Black's death, and two, that the defendant did so purposely or knowingly. One element the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt is that the defendant acted purposely or knowingly. A person acts purposely when it is the person's conscious object to cause the death or serious bodily injury resulting in death. A person acts knowingly when the person is aware that it is practically certain that his conduct will cause death or serious bodily injury resulting in death. The nature of the purpose or knowledge with which the defendant acted toward Michael Black is a question of fact for the jury to decide. Purpose and knowledge are conditions of the mind which cannot be seen and can only be determined by inferences from conduct, words, or acts. It's not necessary for the state to produce a witness or witnesses who could testify that the defendant stated, for example, that his purpose was to cause death or serious bodily injury resulting in death, or that he knew that his conduct would cause death or serious bodily injury resulting in death. It is within your power to find that proof of purpose or knowledge has been furnished beyond a reasonable doubt by inferences which may arise from the nature of the acts and the surrounding circumstances. Such things as the place where the acts occur, the weapon used, the location, number and nature of wounds inflicted, and all that was done or said by the defendant preceding, connected with, and immediately succeeding the events leading to the death of Michael Black are among the circumstances to be considered. Although the state must prove that the defendant acted either purposely or knowingly, the state is not required to prove a motive. If the state has proved the essential elements of the offense beyond a reasonable doubt, the defendant must be found guilty of that offense regardless of the defendant's motive or lack of motive. If the state, however, has proved a motive, you may consider that insofar as it gives meaning to other circumstances. On the other hand, you may consider the absence of motive in weighing whether or not the defendant is guilty of the crime charge. A homicide or a killing with a deadly weapon such as a firearm in itself would permit you to draw an inference that the defendant's purpose was to take life or to cause serious bodily injury resulting in death. A deadly weapon 
as any firearm or other weapon, device, instrument, material, or substance, which in the manner it is used or intended to be used is known to be capable of pr producing death or serious bodily injury. In your deliberations, you may consider the weapon used in the matter and circumstances of the killing, and if you are satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant shot and killed Michael Black with a gun, you may draw an inference from the weapon used, that is, the gun, and from the matter and circumstances of the killing as to the defendant's purpose or knowledge. The other element the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt is that the defendant caused Michael Black's death or serious bodily injury resulting in death. As I previously advised you, in order to convict the defendant of murder, the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant either purposely or knowingly caused the victim's death or serious bodily injury resulting in death. In that regard, serious bodily injury means bodily injury that creates a substantial risk of death. A substantial risk of death exists where it is a high pro highly probable that the injury will result in death. In order for you to find the defendant guilty of purposeful serious bodily injury murder, the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that it was the defendant's conscious object to cause serious bodily injury that then resulted in the victim's death, that the defendant knew that the injury created a substantial risk of death, and that it was highly probable that death would result. In order for you to find the defendant guilty of knowing serious bodily injury murder, the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant was aware that it was practically certain that his conduct would cause serious bodily injury that then resulted in the victim's death, that the defendant knew that the injury created a substantial risk of death, and that it was highly probable that death would result. Whether the killing was committed purposely or knowingly, causing death or serious bodily injury resulting in death must be within the design or contemplation of the defendant. In order for you to find the defendant guilty of murder, the state must first establish beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant caused Michael Black's death or serious bodily injury resulting in death, either purposely or knowingly, as I have defined these terms for you. The state, however, again, is not required to prove a motive. If the state has proved the essential elements of the offense beyond a reasonable doubt, the defendant must be found guilty of that offense regardless of the defendant's motive or lack of motive. If the state, however, has proved a motive, you may consider that insofar as it gives meaning to other circumstances. On the other hand, you may consider the absence of motive in weighing whether or not the defendant is guilty of the crime charged. A homicide or a killing with a deadly weapon, again, such as a firearm in itself, would permit you to draw an inference that the defendant's purpose was to take life or cause serious bodily injury resulting in death. Again, a deadly weapon is any firearm or other weapon, device, instrument, material, or substance which in any manner it is used or intended to be used is known to be capable of producing death or serious bodily injury. In your deliberations, you may consider the weapon used in the matter and circumstances of the killing, and if you are satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant shot and killed Michael Black with a gun, you may draw an inference from the weapon used that is the gun and from the matter and circumstances of the killing as to the defendant's purpose or knowledge. Now, all jurors do not have to agree unanimously concerning which form of murder is present, so long as all believe that it was one form of murder or the other. However, for a defendant to be guilty of murder, all jurors must agree that the defendant either knowingly or purposely caused the death or serious bodily injury resulting in the death of Michael Black. If, after consideration of all the evidence, you are convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant either purposely or knowingly caused Michael Black's death or serious bodily injury resulting in death, then the verdict must be guilty. If, however, after consideration of all the evidence, you find that the state has failed to prove any element of an offense beyond a reasonable doubt, your verdict must be not guilty. I'll now define murder by one's own conduct for you. As to count one, with respect to defendant Munoz, the purposeful knowing murder count, the state alleges that the defendant acted by his own conduct in causing the death of Michael Black. If you unanimously find that the defendant either purposely or knowingly caused the death of Michael Black or serious bodily injury resulting in the death of Michael Black, you must also decide whether the state has proven beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant committed the homicidal act by his own conduct. A finding of one's own conduct does not require a specific finding that the defendant's actions standing alone caused the victim's death. The relevant inquiry is whether or not the defendant actively and directly participated in the homicidal act or acts, that is, here the state alleges that defendant Munoz used a firearm to shoot Michael Black. 
By his plea, defendant Munoz denies that he is denies that he is guilty of this crime and denies such an alleged act by him. The critical elements that are whether the defendant acted and the immediacy of his conduct to the victim's demise. In other words, the defendant must be the direct and immediate cause of death in order to satisfy the own conduct element. Even if there is evidence that more than one person was involved in the alleged homicide, if you find the Dennis Munoz actively and directly participated in the homicidal act or acts, then you may consider that if you choose to support finding the murder was done by the defendant's own conduct. If you find the defendant did not actively and directly participate in the infliction of any of the acts or acts, that is, the defendant was merely an accomplice to the murder, then you cannot find that he acted by his own conduct for the murder. Again, the state must prove own conduct beyond a reasonable doubt. Now, if you find the defendant committed the crime of purposeful knowing murder and you unanimously agree that the state has proven beyond a reasonable doubt that he acted by his own conduct, you must answer yes to the own conduct question on the verdict sheet. If you find the defendant committed the crime of purposeful knowing murder but you find the state did not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he acted by his own conduct, you must answer no to the own conduct question on the verdict sheet. I'll now define accomplice liability for you. The indictment charges in count three, as I have read that count to you, that defendant Edwin Velasquez is legally responsible for the criminal conduct of Dennis Munoz in violation of a law which reads in pertinent part as follows. A person is guilty of an offense if it is committed by his own conduct or conduct of another person for which he is legally accountable or both. A person is legally accountable for the conduct of another person when he is an accomplice to such other person in the commission of an offense. A person is an accomplice of another person in the commission of an offense if, with the purpose of promoting or facilitating the commission of the offense, he a. solicits such other person to commit it and or b. aids or agrees or attempts to aid such other person in planning or committing it. This provision of the law means that not only is the person who actually commits the criminal act responsible for it, but one who is legally accountable as an accomplice is also responsible as if he committed the crime himself. In this case, the state alleges that defendant Velasquez is guilty of the crime of the murder of Michael Black committed by Dennis Munoz because Velasquez acted as Munoz's accomplice. In order to find the defendant Velasquez guilty, the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt each of the following elements. One, that Dennis Munoz committed the crime of murder of Michael Black, as I have just explained the elements of that offense. Two, that Edwin Velasquez solicited Dennis Munoz to commit it and or Velasquez did aid or agree or attempt to aid him in planning or committing it. Three, that Edwin Velasquez's purpose was to promote or facilitate the commission of the offense of murder. Four, that Edwin Velasquez possessed the criminal state of mind that is required to be proved against the person who actually committed the act. Remember that one acts purposely with respect to his conduct or a result thereof if it is his conscious object to engage in the conduct of that nature or to cause such a result. Solicit means to strongly urge, suggest, lure, or proposition. Aid means to assist, support, or supplement the efforts of another. Agrees to aid means to encourage by promise of assistance or support. Attempt to aid means that a person takes substantial steps in a course of conduct designed to or planned to lend support or assistance in the efforts of another to cause the commission of the substantive offense. If you find that the defendant, Edwin Velasquez, with the purpose of promoting or facilitating the commission of the offense of the murder of Michael Black, solicited Dennis Munoz to commit it and or aided or agreed or attempted to aid him in planning or committing it, then you should find Edwin Velasquez as if he committed the crime of murder himself. To prove the Edwin Velasquez criminal liability, the state does not have to prove his accomplice status by direct evidence of a formal plan to commit a crime. There does not have to be verbal agreement by all who are charged. 
proof may be circumstantial. Participation and agreement can be established from conduct as well as the spoken word. Mere presence at or near the scene does not make one a participant in the crime, nor does the failure of a spectator to interfere make him a participant in the crime. It is, however, a circumstance to be considered with the other evidence in determining whether he was present as an accomplice. Presence is not in itself conclusive evidence of that fact. Whether presence has any probative value depends upon the total circumstances. To constitute guilt, there must exist a community of purpose and actual participation in the crime committed. <coughs> While mere presence at the scene of the perpetration of a crime does not render a person a participant in it, proof that one is present at the scene of the commission of the crime without disproving or opposing it is evidence from which, in connection with other circumstances, it is possible for the jury to infer that he assented thereto, lent to it his countenance and approval, and was thereby aiding the same. It depends upon the totality of the circumstances as those circumstances appear from the evidence. An accomplice may be convicted on proof of the commission of a crime or of his complicity therein, even though the person who, is, who it is claimed committed the crime has not been prosecuted or convicted or has been convicted of a different offense or degree of offense or has an immunity from prosecution or conviction of, has been, or has been acquitted. In order to convict Edwin Velasquez as an accomplice to the crime of murder of Michael Black as charged, you must find that Edwin Velasquez had the purpose to participate in that particular crime. He must act with the purpose of promoting or facilitating the commission of the substantive crime of murder with which he is charged. It is not sufficient to prove only that the defendant had knowledge that, the, that another person was going to commit the crime charged. The state must prove that it was the defendant's conscious object that the specific conduct charged be committed. In sum, in order to find Edwin Velasquez guilty of committing the crime of murder of Michael Black, the state must prove each of the following elements beyond a reasonable doubt. One, that Dennis Munoz committed the crime of the murder of Michael Black. Two, that Edwin Velasquez's purpose was to promote or facilitate the commission of the offense. Three, that Edwin Velasquez solicited Dennis Munoz to commit it and or did aid or agree or attempt to aid Dennis Munoz in planning or committing it. Four, that Edwin Velasquez possessed the criminal state of mind that is required to be proved against the person who actually committed the criminal act. If you find that the state has proven each and every one of the elements that I have explained to you beyond a reasonable doubt, then you must find Edwin Velasquez guilty of the murder of Michael Black. If on the other hand you find the state has failed to prove one or more of these elements beyond a reasonable doubt, then you must find Edwin Velasquez not guilty. I'll now define conspiracy for you. Under the second count of the indictment, the defendants are charged with the crime of conspiracy to commit murder. Our statutes provide as follows. A person is guilty of conspiracy with another person or persons to commit a crime if with the purpose of promoting or facilitating its commission he either agrees with such other person or persons that they or one or more of them will engage in conduct which constitutes such crime or an attempt or solicitation to commit such crime or agrees to aid such other person or persons in the planning or commission of such crime or an attempt or solicitation to commit such crime. A conspiracy to commit the crime of murder is a crime in itself separate and distinct from the crime of murder. In other words, a defendant may be found guilty of the crime of conspiracy regardless of whether the defendant is guilty or not guilty of the crime of murder. In order for you to find a defendant guilty of the crime of conspiracy, the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt the following elements. With respect to defendant Munoz, that defendant agreed with another person or persons that they or one or more of them would engage in conduct which constitutes a crime or an attempt or solicitation to commit such crime. And with respect to defendant Velasquez, that the defendant agreed to aid another person or persons in planning or commission of a crime or of an attempt or solicitation to commit such crime. And with respect to both defendants, that the defendant's purpose was to promote or facilitate the commission of the crime of murder. A person acts purposely with respect to the nature of his conduct or a result thereof if it is his conscious object to engage in conduct which constitutes such crime or an attempt or solicitation to commit such crime. 
conduct of that nature or cause such a result. A person acts purposely with respect to attendant circumstances if he is aware of the existence of such circumstances or he believes or hopes that they exist. In order to find a defendant guilty of the crime of conspiracy, the state does not have to prove that he actually committed the crime of murder. However, to decide whether the state has proven the crime of conspiracy, you must understand what constitutes the crime of murder as I have previously defined that offense for you. A conspiracy may be proven by direct or circumstantial evidence. It is not essential that there be direct contact among all the conspirators or that they enter the agreement at the same time. If the defendant is aware that any person he conspired with also conspired with others to commit the same crime, the defendant is guilty of conspiring with the others. He need not be aware of their identity. Now, mere association, acquaintance, or family relationship with an alleged conspirator is not enough to establish a defendant's guilt of conspiracy, nor is mere awareness of the conspiracy, nor would it be sufficient for the state to prove only that the defendant met with others or that they discussed names and interests in common. However, any of these factors, if present, may be taken into consideration along with other relevant evidence in your deliberation. You have to decide whether the defendant's purpose was that he or a person with whom he was conspiring would commit the crime of murder. For him to be found guilty of conspiracy, the state has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that when he agreed, it was his conscious object or purpose to promote or make it easier to commit the crime of murder. The nature of the purpose with which the defendant acted is a question of fact for you, the jury, to decide. Purpose is a condition of the mind which cannot be seen and can only be determined by inference such 